Um, so uh, those of you that were here a couple of months ago uh, had the opportunity, I think, to hear from my wife. Um, she is the best thing about me, uh, but I'm going to do my best today to talk a little bit about uh, why I'm seeking the volunteer opportunity of being the next chairman of the Georgia Republican Party. So what I want to do is tell you a little bit about my personal background, why I'm running, uh, what I think we want to accomplish over the next two years, and, and the keys, I think, to make that goal a reality. Uh, so the first thing I want you to know about me, I'm real close with my dad. My dad is an attorney, I am too. We practice law together for uh, about five and a half years. It's the best job I've ever had. Uh, but we talk on the phone just about every day. So when I decided, after talking with Jacqueline about it, uh, to run for this, I called him up and I said, uh, I'm going to run to be chairman of the Georgia Republican Party. There's a long pause on the other end of the telephone line, and he said, son, how much does that pay? <laughs> and I said, well, Dad, it's a volunteer deal. And he said, well, you're nuts. Um, but I don't think I'm nuts. The reason that I am seeking this opportunity is I believe, I've always believed that elections have consequences. I believe that the 2024 election has tremendously serious consequences attached to it. And I'll just tell you a brief story to me about the consequences of elections. So uh, my stepson Jackson, his birthday was yesterday, turned 12. He just finished the sixth grade. Um, third and fourth grade for Jackson were conducted over Zoom. Um, and that's because of who won some elections for a local board of education. Um, it really hurt him developmentally, educationally, discipline, lots of issues. In fifth grade, when he finally got to go back to school while wearing a mask the entire year on the bus and in class, um, was a struggle. And so uh, we made a decision um, to enroll Jackson in a private school, to get him some additional education resources and some consistent discipline at school. And the turnaround's been amazing. And I was reflecting on that yesterday as I was talking to him before getting ready to go to bed. And what I think about, though, are all the children who don't have those resources at home, who had a year, two years stolen from them at some of the most critical moments of their lives. That happened because of an election. Now, there are other elections recently that have had consequences. The election of a gentleman named Alvin Bragg, who is the district attorney in Manhattan up in New York. Now, Mr. Bragg ran on a campaign promise of putting Donald Trump in prison. Now, I don't care if you love Donald Trump or you like Donald Trump or you don't like Donald Trump, the idea that somebody's going to run for office, not saying, I'm going to prosecute the laws, and come what may, bad guys are going to jail, but I don't like this person, so I'm going to deprive them of their freedom and liberty. I didn't think that would ever happen in the United States of America. And I certainly didn't think it would ever happen to a president of the United States. First time in 230 years that that's happened. But that's because somebody won an election. And finally, I'll talk to you about Fannie Willis, the district attorney in Fulton County, not far away from here. 16 of our friends and neighbors, probably some people that have been to one of these meetings, have spent over a year being persecuted by a team of lawyers and investigators because they met in the state capitol on December 14th of 2020 and said, while this election is still being contested in court, we want the President of the United States to have a remedy if he wins his lawsuit. Just like John Kennedy got in 1960 in Hawaii, when three Democrat electors, including two federal judges, met in the state capitol in Honolulu to preserve his right while Democrats were seeking a recount. Again, in the history of our republic, we've never seen members of the Electoral College criminally targeted for prosecution for discharging their duties under federal law. But here we are because somebody won an election. So elections have dramatic consequences. So that's why I'm running for state chairman. I've kind of enjoyed uh, my post-Senate tenure, but I felt so strongly that we had to do something 
uh, to make sure that we achieve our goal. So what is our goal? Our goal is to win the presidential election in November of 2024 and make sure we get the 16 electoral votes for our Republican candidate for president. Because if we do that, the likelihood is we're going to send Joe Biden back to Delaware. I think Democrats can win the White House without Georgia. I don't see how a Republican becomes president without winning in Georgia. So the work we do here is critically important. So then the question becomes, okay, Josh, federal statewide elections haven't been too kind to us the last couple of times. What's going to be different about how the Georgia Republican Party does things if you're the chairman? That's a fair question. I think there are four keys for us to be successful. The first thing is we've got to come together as Republicans. Now, people sometimes will deride this sort of thing as happy talk or let's just mindlessly cheerlead anything an elected Republican says or does. Please hear me. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is we're going to go through a process. We're going to get a nominee for president. We've all got to be united behind that person. Now, I normally like to ask people at this point, how many of you know who John Fetterman is? Does that name ring a bell for anybody? He's a United States Senator, for those of you that don't know from Pennsylvania. John Fetterman was the Democratic nominee. He had a stroke. I'm not making fun of the fact the man had a serious medical incident. But think about the Democrats' reaction. I watched the debate between uh, John Fetterman and Dr. Oz. He could not form a complete sentence. You did not have a single Democrat get up and say, I don't know if we can vote for this guy. I'm not comfortable with this. I don't think this man is prepared to be in the U.S. Senate. I think he needs medical help. That never happened. Now, meanwhile, while that race is going on here in Georgia, we have Herschel Walker running for the U.S. Senate. And we had prominent Republican voices go on national television and say, you know, I went to the polling place. I kind of wrung my hands while I was in line, but I just couldn't bring myself to vote for Herschel Walker. Now, we lost that race by less than five votes per precinct statewide. <clears throat> Meanwhile, Governor Kemp gets reelected by the largest majority since Sonny Perdue's reelection in 2006. So what does that tell us? It tells us that when we're together, we win elections in Georgia. But when we are divided, we get six more years of Raphael Warnock in the U.S. Senate. And we can't chance that in 2024 because no one wants four more years of Joe Biden. We definitely don't want a President Kamala Harris, right? Which is a very real possibility. So we've got to be together. So how does the state chairman accomplish that? Number one, by being relentlessly positive about the good things that Republicans are doing from the courthouse to the General Assembly to Washington, D.C. There are plenty of people shooting at Republicans. I'm not going to be one of those people if I'm your state chairman. I'm going to be talking about all the reasons why <laughs> all the reasons why your friends and neighbors should be voting for Republicans. And then the second thing is, I'm not going to play in primary politics. We're going to have a lot of people run for president. We're going to promote them. We're going to get people excited about them. Lots of different ideas that people bring to the table. But the chairman has to help bring us together once we have a nominee so that we walk together towards winning in November. So those, those are critically important things, and that's why I spent that much time on that. Secondly, we've got to raise money. If you and I want to go on a trip, we've got to be able to put gas in the car to get it to where we want to go, right? Uh, this is not an inexpensive enterprise. And so uh, the Georgia Republican Party chairman is going to have to get to work immediately raising money. I've raised over a million dollars in political contributions, both in my own campaigns for public office and supporting other candidates and causes. So this is not going to be new to me when I walk in uh, on June 10. Importantly, though, I have a network of people around the state who are also very familiar with fundraising, who are excited about getting off the sideline, getting into the game, and making sure we have the financial resources to be successful. So that's really, really important. We've got to raise the financial resources to be successful. The number three, the Georgia Republican Party's got to be a resource to county Republican Party organizations. And, and I want to start this conversation by talking to you about election integrity because there are two 
parts of election integrity that are really important. One is all of us should feel confident in the result of our electoral process. That's really important. But equally important is there are a lot of our friends and neighbors who either aren't volunteering or aren't even voting anymore because they're not confident in our process. Now, we've made a lot of gains just in the last couple of years. Senate Bill 202 was a big win for Republicans. If you look at what happened with absentee voting and other areas that were of great concern, there was improvement. There's more improvement we could ask for, and that work of the Election Integrity Task Force needs to continue. We also have to train poll watchers, but also poll workers. You know, a poll worker is incredibly valuable to have somebody that's making sure our laws are enforced in the polling place. And yes, I know this makes people cringe, but we need to have a team of lawyers, a lot of lawyers, because the Democrats practice something called lawfare. When they don't get their way at the state house, they run to the federal courthouse to get the changes that they want. They want to try to pick a judge to overturn the will of the General Assembly. So we can't just stand by and say, man, that's bad they're doing that. I wish they'd stop doing that. We've got to have our own strategy, and that involves retaining lawyers who have the expertise to make sure that the elections process we go through in 2024, we do everything possible to make sure only legal votes are cast and counted. That's really, really important. And for counties to have resources they need. If you're trying to make changes to your voter list because it's not being updated properly, and this happened in Fulton County, DeKalb County, Cobb County, concerned citizens petitioned using the process in Senate Bill 202, and then those county boards of elections basically said, we're gonna dare you to hire a lawyer and make us have this hearing that the law says we're supposed to have, you know? So the state party needs to stand in that gap so that if you want to do that, we've got the resources ready to go. Because there's a blackout period coming when you can't do it at all. So the state party needs to be there to do that. So election integrity, very important. The other thing we've got to do in an excellent way is training. Training for our grassroots leaders, our county chairs, our precinct chairs, and our volunteers. I remember when I became a precinct chairman, it went like this. I was at a mass meeting and somebody said, Josh, why don't you be a precinct chairman? And I said, what's that? And they said, it's going to be great. Just sign this piece of paper and you'll be a precinct chairman. And so I did. And uh, I found out later what that really meant. And it was a lot of work. Uh, so we just need to make sure that our volunteer leaders, we set the expectation for what we are expecting them to do. And then we give them the tools to be successful. And if we do that, and the way I think we do that is through all day boot camp style training that's positioned regionally around the state so you don't have to go to the party office to get it. And then we take the best training and make it on demand available through our website. Because we live in an on demand world. People expect things when they want it, right? So if y'all want some training, you shouldn't have to wait on a staffer from DC or Atlanta to come over here. You ought to be able to pull it down and put it on that screen, right? So. That's really important. If we're going to rally the grassroots army, we need to win in November of 2024. I tell people a good grassroots organization is like a football team having a great field goal kicker. If the game is close, you want that kicker ready to go. If we have a great grassroots organization, it can be the difference between victory and defeat. So fourth and finally, I want to talk to you for a moment about communication. We need to do a better job communicating internally and externally. The state chairman needs to make sure there are open lines of communication. That means regular state committee meetings, regular state executive committee meetings, an open line with our chairman. I really like the idea of a regularly set call with our new county chairs and then breaking down the other county chairs by congressional district and giving them that direct line, that direct schedule opportunity. They, went, they may wind up being short conversations, but it lets people know I've got a direct line to the chairman. I don't have to fight through some maze to get to him and talk to him about my concern. That's really important because I think when you lose internal communication, you lose trust. And I do think there's an element of that going around as I travel around. External communication, also really, really important that we improve. We send out emails. I was being interviewed for a podcast a couple weeks ago and the young lady said to me, Josh, I've got 30,000 unread emails on my phone. I haven't even bothered to click and open to see what's inside. That doesn't mean we should stop emailing, but it means we need to communicate in other ways. We need to launch podcasts. 
We need to launch broadcast quality video programs like something you would see on cable television. Because who is going to tell the Republican Party's story? Is WSB television going to tell our story? Is the Atlanta Journal-Constitution going to tell our story? I don't think so. I think that the Georgia Republican Party has to take on that mantle to be the storyteller. And the storyteller is not always going to be a 44-year-old white guy in a coat and tie. You know, we need podcasts that are directed to 18 to 35 year olds. We need podcasts that are directed to people of color. And the people we need to showcase on those platforms are members of those communities. And the good news that I can share with you after three months of traveling around to these meetings, we have no shortage of spokesmen and spokeswomen that we can put in front of a camera and tell these stories. I was in Valdosta last night and heard a story from a young Mexican-American veteran who loves this country, loves the Republican Party, and we need to get those stories told. People need to hear from, from their peers why this is important. The last thing I'll say about communication is this. We need to recruit and develop excellent candidates in parts of this state that have been declared no-go zones for Republicans for years. Because the best outreach, it's not hiring a staff for six months before an election. The best outreach is your friend or neighbor in your neighborhood knocking on your door and saying, I'm running for office as a Republican. Can we have a conversation about why that is and why it's important? And it may not change that race in that single seat, but if we do that around the state and we improve marginally, remember, we were five votes per precinct away from Senator Herschel Walker. It doesn't take much. So if we do those four things with excellence, we come together as Republicans. We raise the money to be successful. We make the county party a true resource for, for excuse me, the state party a true resource for county parties, and we change the quality and quantity of our communication. We will evict Joe Biden from the White House in November of 2024. We will send him back to Delaware. We will finally put the adults back in charge of this country. So if that's something you're interested in, you can find out more at my website. It's mccoonforchairman.com. And an old friend of mine that's been in sales for a long time told me you don't get the order if you don't ask for it. So I want to ask as plainly as I can, if you are a delegate or an alternate to the state convention in Columbus, I am asking for your vote to be your next state chairman on June 10th. I want this volunteer opportunity. I believe that us working together, we can win in November. And 20 years from now, we can say we are the ones that stopped the terrible things that have been happening to our country and turned this country around and preserved it for our children and our grandchildren. Thank you very much for your time and attention.